hands up or hands down. I'm referring to the different time trial riding positions. There are pros and cons for both. Watch the professionals and even they are divided. So how do you work out what is the best position for you? Well, I headed to the Silverstone Sports Engineering Hub to try and find the answer using the wind tunnel to measure the difference in the aerodynamics between each position. It isn't that black and white though, so I'll also be getting the help of an expert to interpret these results and make them relevant to the average age group triathletes like you and I. I've spoken to quite a few triathletes and cyclists before coming here and it really is incredible how split the opinions are when you ask what's more aerodynamic. A lot of people are going with this more traditional position of saying well surely it's you know, what we used to see with hands low and stretched out. Others adamant that it's got to be your hands up in front of your face and you only have to look at the field of the pro triathletes and you see the likes of Sebastian Keenley and Jan Fredino who do have that more traditional position but then you've got a strong bike rider like Joe Skipper with his hands right in front of your face. It is so split and I have to admit that I actually haven't experimented very much with mine and I'm still someone who goes for the low position but that doesn't necessarily mean it's more aero for me. Well you might have experimented with what's more comfortable for you or what you think is more aerodynamic. Maybe you're trying to find that position that replicates your favourite pro. We'll all have different ideas of what we think is our perfect position and we'll also have different ways of finding that but it's a good idea to at least know what factors are coming into play when it comes to aerodynamics. So with all of that in mind, it's probably time I actually went and did some testing. Okay, let's get going with test number one. So my bars are in a fairly neutral level position, which is my normal, so I thought it made sense to start here. And I'm gonna be doing my best to concentrate on holding the position that I'd aim for during a 70.3 or a full Ironman, just to keep it as real as possible, rather than trying to be ultra aero in a position that I would only be able to hold for a few minutes of the test. In order to keep it as real as possible, we're going to test my aerodynamics at three different speeds, 30, 40, and 50 kilometers an hour, and three different your angles for both the aero bar setups to give the best picture of a real life scenario. And it's worth noting that the aerodynamics are talked about as CDA, the drag coefficient, which in cycling terms is the resistance that you and your bike are creating. The higher that number, the more resistance experienced. And this is the data that will be recorded today, which will then be used to calculate the power in watts that is in theory being saved or lost with a change in hand position. In simple terms, the lower the CDA, the less power in watts, required to travel at the same speed. As you can see, I'm wearing my GTN cycle kit here, which will be slightly less aero than a tri-suit, but as I'm wearing the same for both of the tests, then it's not going to affect the end results. And similarly, the helmet is not the most aero version from Cask, but I'll be using this aero road helmet throughout as helmet choice is not an area that we're investigating today. <laughs> So that's test one complete. Now we're just going to bring the bars up and start test two. And to keep things simple today, we are only comparing those two different positions. So for this second position, I've chosen a 15 degree bar angle, which is the maximum angle allowed for UCI legal TT. And it's still a significant increase in bar height in relation to my normal flat bar position. Now is probably a good time to discuss some of the other factors to consider when you're choosing your position. As much as I'm excited to find out the numbers, they're only part of the aero jigsaw. You need to think about the length of your race, your physical strength and flexibility, as well as your overall position on the bike. You might be limited to the adaptability or size of your bike. And the type of aero bars you're using can also make a big difference as to what position you're able to hold to. And then there's the conditions. For example, if it's really windy, you might be after a position in which you feel you've got more control. All right, that is the final test done at all the different speeds and the different angles. So I've got a lot of numbers, which I'm excited to look at because that position felt quite comfy. So you never know, it might be more error. But anyway, we need to go and calculate these numbers and interpret them. So for that, I need some expert help. And I'm going to speak to Simon Smart from Drag to Zero to interpret it, but also to help give us the bigger picture on how you choose the best aero position for you.
So there was a lot of numbers to take in, but just for kind of simplicity's sake, I think the most obvious one for me was the fact that I had a six watt difference as my hands being low to my hands being high at 40k pH. And the biggest surprise to me was the fact that it was with my hands low that I was quicker. Does that surprise you? No, it doesn't. I think it surprises a lot. It surprises a lot of people because so many people have their hands high now, and you assume that, that must just be uh, the holy grail and it's super fast. Um, but it's, it's, it's a tricky one to make a quick comparison like yeah. that because ultimately you need to optimise both positions. So to get a true answer, to really know whether hands low or hands high is better, you really would need to spend some time optimising the low position, making it as good as you can, mm -hmm. and then raising your arms up and going through it all again for a process of another two yeah. or three hours and optimising around that that could even involve different skin suits and different helmets to yeah. give you the optimum package. And that's really where people get to one or the other. I've tested a lot of people, and so I'm lucky to see what goes on. And you know, they, it, it goes in both directions, but there are athletes that are actually faster in, in a flat arm position. Mm -hmm. And you might find that surprising, but ultimately position is all about your your um, shoulders and your head yeah. and um, how you can hold it. Now, some of the sort of very experienced athletes are still probably a little bit faster with their arms flat, but it's an incredibly difficult position to sustain. And most people, even in the wind tunnel, if they can do it for five minutes, can't mm. do it over an Ironman distance. Yeah. So the reason why the high arms work every time for me, and it's the best solution for virtually every athlete out there, is because it's so sustainable. What we're trying to do with the system these days is to distribute the weight of your body all over your arms so mm. you're supported all the way on, on the underside of your arm, on the elbows and on the hands. And you have a very relaxed position which forces your shoulders and head into a, into a, a sort of a natural fast position without you having to force your body and elevate your heart rate. Yeah, I mean, I found just I've never ridden with my hands up and, you know, I haven't had that much time trialling, but my go-to is flat and that's how we had a, a control um, and I was surprised you know, we just put it up 15 degrees just for these pure yes. experiment but I was surprised at how comfortable I did feel so that's why I was slightly disappointed that in theory I would be slower by about a, just over a couple of minutes for an Ironman but like you're saying that isn't so relevant because there's so much more. People can go in a wind tunnel and get carried away mm. and get into a very aero position but they can never hold but you've got to recognise a slower position which you know will be faster in the real world and that's right. what we're always trying to work towards is you know you're trying to find a position where you can just not think about the aerodynamics and just think about producing the right level of power mm -hmm. and not worry about your head and shoulders and it, it it has changed you know I mean 10 15 years ago that we didn't have the hardware to get people to push people into this good position so it, it was it, you really were saying right now think about your head think about your shoulders and that was difficult and it was a real skill but it's so much easier now for an athlete to start out I would always recommend a less experienced rider to start with a higher hand position. The, the other thing is though, it's always changing. And like you identified, you know, no, there isn't like one answer. And you, you, can, you can really dial in someone's position and think mm -hmm. it's nailed and they come back and see you two years later and they've changed it again yeah. because your body's adapting. You're able to, you know, you might have better core strength, better flexibility, yeah. and gradually you can get lower and still produce the power so to, if, get, to go if faster. You, if you had the time and the ability to get strong enough and flexible enough to, to be lower and hold it longer and you could sustain that, is that better than having your hands high? Ultimately, yes, I think that that's sort of where you go to, but it, I'd say it was probably 50-50 you know, or 70-50 still to having your hands mm -hmm. slightly high, because you know that's quite a general term, hands high, yeah, but exactly. there's just a little bit of angle or no mm -hmm. angle or flat arms, and, and it's all to do with the interaction of your head, and yeah. it's, there's, there's so, so much going on there. I would say the majority of riders are still faster with their hands high when they've been optimised, but there are a few out there that, that obviously have tried it yeah. and find it still as quick or they, you know some people just prefer the, the the way they can pull on their bars when they're low and um and the other thing is some people maybe say that it's it's less stable when your your hands are high but i think you can you can counteract that with good control from the armrests and what about view because again i was just in the wind tunnel i've never ridden my bike outside with my hands high and i kept my head in the same position for the for the experiment so i didn't tuck it in any any lower yeah, yeah. but even not even without tucking my head in lower i still suddenly realized that i couldn't actually see in front of me where i could when my hands were low so 
Do people yeah. start bringing their head up if you bring your hands yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. I think that that is that is a co common problem you you can you can make if if you go for if you just go out and and you don't really know what you're doing and you get a very high angled um, armrest and. A ski pole system that you are looking over it and you're higher than you were before you would you will be slower um, but the trick is is you have to get your head down but still look forwards mm -hmm. and um, you know another thing there is having a helmet that's positioned right with the visor quite high so it doesn't block your your field of vision but you know because obviously the thing we try to do all the time is you must be looking down the road not at the floor mm. yeah. and you mentioned helmets very quickly and just want to touch on it very quickly because I didn't involve the helmet in my experiment but um, do you need to, is a different helmet suit the different position? That is a big part of any kind of optimization process with your position is playing with the helmet. And, and when we, when we do um, wind tunnel sessions, you always have several helmets on, on hand. And of course, it's not practical to just to go through randomly sort of testing a, a list of 10 helmets. Yeah. But what we do is we have an eye for the position. And as a position evolves, you might say, oh, well, that helmet's going to work more for that position. And that makes more sense because ultimately what you're trying to do is trying to sort of Fair the reduce the flow separation that would otherwise occur behind your head. Mm -hmm. But as you, you know, as a system, you can imagine as your neck gets shorter and tucked into your shoulders, that you you end up with a different the need for a different shaped helmet. This might be a question you can't answer, but do you have any advice for anyone watching this who maybe doesn't have access to the you know, amazing wind tunnel facilities and they're currently you know, maybe just upgraded to get a TT bike and they're like, what do we do with our hands? What would your advice be to them? Absolutely, good good question. I'd, I would definitely say now that these, these days with the, the hardware that's available, you just want to invest in that arena, maybe a 15 degree angled pad and um, about 40 degree angle pole um, so you can get your hands in sort of a medium to sort of high height and just get used to riding that position it's a different weight distribution of course to being on on a road bike and you just just getting the feel for that for a season half a season and it's much better to do that and that's what we tell a lot of clients now in fact we 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 tend to advise people to have a, just a fit to start with before they go in the wind tunnel because it's much these days when you go to the wind tunnel it's not about proving these these vastly different sort of concepts and position everyone else has done that over the mm -hmm. last 10 years that works done for you so it's really i believe the starting point is to go with something with your hands up make sure you're relaxed um the bike stay we can get used to riding it you can just you're not moving you look at the photos from a race and your head's always in one yeah, position you're looking tip, down yeah. the road and you need to be sustainable. There's no point in spending a lot of money on going to a wind tunnel if you can't stay still. Yeah. Then when you go to the wind tunnel, what you're looking for these days is, is then you're at that point where you're chasing the podium in an age group. Mm. So you're chasing the one or two watt differences. That's what you want the wind tunnel for, really. Mm -hmm. I think there's enough knowledge out there now to go and get a fit or even just buy, you can just successfully buy the right cockpit, yeah. put it on and go and ride. And you, you immediately know if it's working because you know you're just you know, your head will be in one place you're not fidgeting around mm -hmm. and then gradually as you gain confidence then you can think about like we spoke about there's levels that definitely getting lower is always good yeah you, you tend to compromise your power there's no doubt about that um the, you know that that's, that's another, a whole another part, the, of, that's another part of it is what we've always called the sort of sweet spot between the two and i think what you're seeing is when you see the the, the 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 top level triathletes in these very low positions and they've got to the point where well your arms could be flat or like that it's because they've got so good at holding and sustaining yeah. that low position but if you were to start in that yeah. you would never hold it You'd, yeah. you you know and, and that's, they're full-time athletes and the rest of us absolutely aren't. yeah so yeah start off and you know it's it's the best compromise, without a doubt, you know, for power, aero, and then chip away at it. Well, I know I've come away from that wanting to experiment because I don't spend enough time riding my TT bike and I'm not strong enough to maintain that long and low, really aero position. So maybe it's time that my hands started to come up a little bit. I know my main take home from speaking to Simon was finding a position that works for me, one that I can hold. And if you can manage to maintain it for the distance that you're preparing, then you're halfway there. Anyway, I'm pretty nosy as you guys probably know, so let me know what hand position you choose and more importantly why, and you can do that in the comments section below and give us a like and a follow whilst you're there.